welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. And Madge is joining us today as well, aren't you, Madge? Just to check that I am actually doing things uh, correctly. I'm wearing uh, one of my channel sweatshirts today because actually on this day in Tudor history, something bad really did happen. Um, if you're interested in these, you, then you can look below this video. There's a shelf of the T-shirt, sweatshirts and various other things with this, uh, this uh, saying on them and I, th I think it really is quite relevant. Unfortunately, something very bad happened on this day in history, 9th of February, 1555. Protestant John Hooper, Bishop of Gloucester and Worcester and former Cistercian monk was burnt at the stake for heresy in Gloucester. Hooper had left the monastic life after reading the works of reformers like Zwingli and Bullinger, and he'd lived in Switzerland for a time in Henry VIII's reign before returning in King Edward VI's reign and working as a chaplain to the king's uncle, Edward Seymour, Duke of Somerset, who was also the Lord Protector during Edward's reign. Hooper was consecrated as Bishop of Gloucester in 1551 and then succeeded Nicholas Heath as Bishop of Worcester in 1552. Following the accession of the Catholic Queen Mary I, Hooper was deprived of his bishopric in March 1554 due to the fact that he'd got married. A martyrologist John Fox writes of how he was imprisoned in, in the Fleet Prison after being falsely accused of owing Queen Mary I money. He was then taken to the counter another prison in Southwark to be examined. After he refused to recant his faith, Hooper was moved to Newgate Prison. And then after further attempts to make him recant, which were unsuccessful, he was taken to Gloucester to prepare for his execution. John Fox states that his former friend, Sir Anthony Kingston, was appointed by the Queen to attend at his execution. Fox writes, as soon as he saw the bishop, he burst into tears. With tender entreaties, he exhorted him to live. True it is, said the bishop, that death is bitter and life is sweet. But alas, consider that the death to come is more bitter and the life to come is more sweet. Fox then gives an account of Bishop Hooper's execution, a burning which took a long time to kill the poor man. About eight o'clock on February the 9th, 1555, he was led forth and many thousand persons were collected as it was market day, all the way being straightly charged not to speak and beholding the people who mourned bitterly for him, he would sometimes lift up his eyes towards heaven and look very cheerfully upon such as he knew. And he was never known during the time of his being among them to look with so cheerful and ruddy a countenance as he did at that time. When he came to the place appointed where he should die, he smilingly beheld the stake and preparation made for him, which was near unto the great elm tree over against the college of priests where he used to preach. Now, after he had entered into prayer, a box was brought and laid before him upon a stool with his pardon from the queen if he would turn. At the sight whereof he cried, if you love my soul, away with it. The box being taken away, Lord Chandos said, Seeing there is no remedy, dispatch him quickly. Command was now given that the fire should be kindled, but because there were not more green faggots than two horses could carry, it kindled not speedily, and was a pretty while also before it took the reeds upon the faggots. At length it burned about him, but the wind having full strength at that place and being a lowering cold morning, it blew the flame from him, so that he was, in a manner, little more than touched by the fire. Within a space after, a few dry faggots were brought and a new fire kindled with faggots, for there were no more reeds, and those burnt at the nether parts, but had small power above because of the wind, saving that it burnt his hair and scorched his skin a little. In the time of which fire, even as at the first flame, he prayed, saying mildly and not very loud, but as one without pain, 
O Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me and receive my soul. After the second fire was spent, he wiped both his eyes with his hands and beholding the people, he said with an indifferent loud voice, for God's love, good people, let me have more fire. And all this while his nether parts did burn, but the faggots were so few that the flame only singed his upper parts. The third fire was kindled within a while after, which was more extreme than the other two. In this fire he prayed with a loud voice, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And these were the last words he was heard to utter. But when he was black in the mouth and his tongue so swollen that he could not speak, yet his lips went until they were shrunk to the gums and he knocked his breast with his hands until one of his arms fell off and then knocked still with the other while the fat, water and blood dropped out at his fingers' ends until by renewing the fire his strength was gone and his hand clay fast in knocking to the iron upon his breast. Then immediately bowing forwards, he yielded up his spirit. Thus was he three quarters of an hour or more in the fire. Even as a lamb, patiently he abode the extremity thereof, neither moving forwards, backwards, nor to any side. But he died as quietly as a child in his bed. And he now reigneth, I doubt not, as a blessed martyr in the joys of heaven, prepared for the faithful in Christ before the foundations of the world, for whose constancy all Christians are bound to praise God. In Queen Victoria's reign in 1862, a monument to Bishop Hooper was erected in St Mary's Square, Gloucester, where Hooper was burned, just outside his former cathedral. It features a statue of Hooper wearing his bishop's robes and mitre, holding a book under his left arm and with his right hand extended in the act of blessing his congregation. A plaque reads, Gloria Soli Deo, for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, not accepting deliverance. John Hooper, D.D., Bishop of Gloucester and Worcester, was burnt to ashes on this spot, February the 9th, Anno Domini, 1555. Also on this day in history, the 9th of February, 1542, Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford, was taken to the Tower of London to prepare for her execution. And you can find out more about that in my video from last year, which I'll give you a link to in the description. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.